Right, back at it again. Fire in the Lake, Vassal playthrough. Last turn we were we did the introduction and we managed to talk about what the game is doing, a little bit about the factions, and we were able to get through three of the factions turn orders, like 1.5 cards through. Uh, now we're up on the U.S. turn. One thing I want to mention real quick is that I, I think I goofed when I talked about U.S. casualties. So during the course of the game, through actions of either the U.S. Uh, fighting or we're going to say uh, the NBA or the VC doing their little dastardly actions or fighting or ambushing or all that good stuff, uh, pieces are removed here. So bases, cubes, gorillas, all this stuff goes to U.S. casualties when they are removed, from when they are like taken out in battle, right? Uh, when we do the coup round and we do go through a whole procedure that we'll talk about in depth when we get to it, but one of the things you do is that you take one out of three pieces in the U.S. casualties box and they go to the out of play box and then the rest return to be brought back into the battle. They go back here, they go back to the available. Uh, you round down, so if there was five pieces here, only one would go away. Um... So it's one of the things you want to do as sort of the VC or NBA player is, is this war of attrition. You want to keep putting pressure on them, on the U.S. player, uh, trying to rack up at least three every round if you can, more if you can do that. Because that way they go out of play. As the U.S. starts running out of troops, that's how they get one of their victory conditions, right? Is support plus available. So as you keep reducing the amount of troops that go back to the available, it makes it harder and harder for the U.S. to achieve victory, which, you know, kind of makes sense, right? Um you notice here that some pieces are already out of play. This is how the game starts. I'm doing the full game. So this is already how many pieces are out of play. Certain events can bring these pieces back in. You'll notice the Arvin has a ton of pieces out of play. Their pieces are brought back by their special pivotal event called Vietnamization. You can see here that we can only do that if we have two plus cards, again, in the, in the RBN leader box. These are done through the coups. We'll show that. And there has to be less than 20 U.S. troops on the map. So this sort of mimics the historical goal or what was determined to be the historical end goal of the Vietnam War from the U.S. perspective. Uh, Vietnamization, I believe, was a Nixon Nixonian policy. I think everybody tries to go for it. Every time we have a war in the, in the modern period, I think in the last 30 years or so, this has been the goal. Um, you know, you want to have your troops stand down and have the, the, the nation you've invaded and, and have regime change in. You want to have their troops stand up. And this is kind of the idea is that we would take the U.S. troops out and the Arvin would basically become the fighting force that we needed it to be, right? So that was called Vietnamization, and that's what this does. You can see when we play this, you get plus 12 Arvin resources and plus 12 aid. This sort of represents what the U.S. did. We gave a lot of materiel and, and support, but we took out manpower, and all the out-of-play Arvin uh, pieces become available, and we can place four cubes anywhere. So it's essentially you get hamstrung in the beginning because the Arvin just doesn't have as much, and then when they do conduct Vietnamization, you get all these pieces come back. So that's pretty nice, uh, but of course the, the, the caveat is that there has to be less than 20 U.S. troops. U.S. troops are more effective, they have better ops, so of course uh, at that point, yeah, maybe the U.S. is close to winning, but this is how you get more stuff to do more coin control, so that theoretically I guess the Arvin could be on the verge of winning too, right? So it's, it's one of those trade-offs, one of the trade-offs you have to make. Okay, so let's get at it. We are now on to the U.S. We're going to do that, right? So we have a limited op or event. If you remember last time, this Bob Hope event is not very good for the U.S. at all. Because we don't have anything. Well, we could move troops, but we don't need to really move them to coin-controlled cities right now. And we don't have a ton of pieces in the casualty pile. This would be nice if we had pieces in the casualty pile, uh, but we don't. So this event sucks. It's not good for us. If we look at the next card, this is one of those things where we could pass, right? Because that event sucks, and, we are, and we're limited to a limited op right now, which is an op in one space. Not really awesome. But if you look, like, um, we, could, we would go second again on this next card, right? Because the order, the U.S. is third on that card order. The NVA and VC go first. Uh, the NVA would become eligible, so they would go first, and then we would be second again. Uh, is the event that good? Let's look true yeah again casualties available um this could be kind of good but again not not good enough to pass not good enough to pass so the u.s has kind of been handed a, a dud a dud opening round here right we we don't have a ton of things to to take advantage of but we do have cool ops we haven't talked about the u.s ops so let's do that U.S. can train, same kind of thing here. We can we basically spend Arvin resources and we can place Arvin pieces. 
Um, the U.S. does not place its own pieces. It only can do that during coup rounds, and then that's the commitment phase. There's a phase where we decide, in fact, you can see down here if we look, we got the victory resources, support, redeploy, commitment. This is when we can move troops in and out of the map. Um, so we only get like a few times the U.S. can like elevate its troop dedication or, or take troops out, right? So when we train, we're basically going to be using that to place Arvin forces. We can also use train to... Um, to pacify. So we can use this to build up support in places where we have a coin controlled train space. So our our pacify requirement, if you remember the Arvin one says, what do we need here? If we have Arvin troops, police, and coin control, you can pacify. So they have a higher level of a higher threshold. To pacify for the US, we only need to be um, in a coin controlled train space. Okay, that's pretty easy. That's a lot easier to do. Okay. We have patrol. Uh, same thing as the Arvin. Patrol lets us move troops uh, along adjacent LOCs, lines of communication, locks, or cities. And we have to stop at any insurgents that are on the locks or in the cities. And then for each lock, we can activate one enemy for each US cube there. And if desired, we get a free assault. So that's a free attack on one lock. This is the way you keep the lines of communication open. This is going to be something that's really important as the game moves on because if you remember... Um, both the NVA, I believe, and the VC have an ambush ability that lets them uh, target adjacent spaces. Let me take a look here, yeah. Right, we can target an adjacent piece if we're on an LOC. So securing the LOCs becomes really important to keep our casualties down. So that's what patrol does. Sweep is the primary way we're going to expose gorillas, right? Because remember, gorillas are hidden or active. So if you look over here, this guy's active, but we have one hidden and we have a base. We can't even touch the base until we get rid of all the gorillas, okay? Sweeping is how you do that. You move any U.S. troops, if desired, into adjacent free LOCs and then into adjacent spaces. So what that means is, like, if we're over here in Saigon, I could take my two guys, I could jump to, like, Route 20 here, this little LOC, and then I could go into uh, Khan Hoa, I could go to Quang Duc, I could go to Bin Tui, right? I can go to those spaces. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, it stops here at Dalat, so I couldn't go into Camera, right? I could pick this space, this space, this space. Okay. Um, if I took Route 4 along the Mekong River here, I could get on that. I could go to Ken Fong, Ken Hoa, or Kanto. Those are adjacent spaces, right, on that lock. So that's how you move things around, and sweeping is how we expose gorillas. Uh, so you activate one gorilla per U.S. troop or irregular there. So that's a nice thing the irregulars can do. And if we're in the jungle, you can only expose one gorilla for every two troops or irregulars there. So... If you look at the spaces here, these are the lowlands. I forget what it say here. Yeah, that's lowlands, okay? These are just like neutral areas. You don't get any advantages or disadvantages. It's it's pretty basic. The jungle areas like this, and then darker colors, right? So it's there's only like, I think, three types of land here. Yeah, there's like lowlands, jungles, mountains. In jungles, it's harder to expose the enemy through sweeps. In mountains, it's harder to kill enemy using fighting. Uh, and we'll show that in a second. So basically, you got to bring double the amount of guys you need to expose things that are hidden in the jungle. That kind of makes sense, right? The jungle is dense. It is hard to find people in it. And it makes sense that in the mountain areas, it's harder to remove troops through battle because, you know, it's, it's a mountainous terrain. It's difficult. It's difficult to actually, like, kill things in the mountain. And we have assault, so we can eliminate enemy forces. This is any space with U.S. troops and insurgents. So usually what the, the way the coin games work is you sweep in there, and then next turn you assault. And the reason that it works that way is that you get a one-two punch, but it also gives the insurgents time to either move their forces out or if they have a base there to put them back into hiding. And you play this kind of cat and mouse game until you can get the right kind of tempo ops um, to do the sweep and assault. Sometimes what you'll do is you'll sweep with the U.S. and then the Arvin will come in and assault. Uh, sometimes the Arvin will sweep and then the U.S. will assault. And that can be a nice way to get a, a quick one-two tempo if you guys are, are moving at the same, or if you have like, you know, turn orders aligned. So you, basically, you want to you move your guys via sweep or patrol, and then you assault in place, okay? Because you can't move to assault. The cost is three Arvin resources if the Arvin assault is added. So basically, the troops get to fight for free, U.S. ones. If they want to utilize the Arvin troops that are in that space with them, it costs resources. Arvin resources. So for each space, we remove one active enemy piece, NBA troops, then guerrillas, bases last, tunnels on a four to six. For each U.S. troop cube... We can remove two inactive enemy pieces for uh, every U.S. cube if we have a base in that space. Or for every one for every two if we're in the highland, that's the mountain areas. 
uh, without a US base. So up here in Pleiku Darlak, Darlak, uh, we would we would get to negate the little t the the two for one or whatever, right? Where we need two troops to get rid of one thing because we have a US base. But here in like Bin Din, we would have to have two cubes to get rid of one exposed gorilla because it's a highlands and that's the way that works. All right, so and in one of the spaces we desired, we can pay to add the Arban Assault. So essentially, if we bring along Arban troops or we move to a space that has Arban troops in it, a good example would be something like here in Quang Nam. If we move troops in here and there was guerrillas here and all that jazz, we could pay three more resources to have whatever Arban troops here help fight. Okay. So sometimes you're going to want to move Arban troops around to help you get a little bit more offensive punch. We'll get to the special activities when we do that, but right now we don't need to do that because we don't have an option for a special activity. So what are we going to do? Do we want to train? Do we want to patrol, sweep, or assault? Well, we don't have anything we can assault because nothing is really exposed and we don't have any troops anywhere where we could actually do the fighting. Like, we have troops and guys here, right? But we don't have anybody exposed, so we can't actually kill anything. Same thing for Bin Din here. We, we have troops and VC guerrillas in the same spot, but we can't do anything about it. What we probably want to do is we probably want to sweep. Sweeping is going to be how we expose these things. We want to kind of put pressure on the VC right away. Unfortunately, they've really like locked into play coup. Uh, ben Din is not looking awesome either. We only have a couple of cubes right now. And since we don't have one of our special activities lets us move cubes around the board, but right now we don't have access to that. So we can only move from adjacent spaces. So we have two cubes here we can move out. We have two cubes here we could move out somewhere and go sweep. I am worried about the lowlands here. I am worried about this because if we let the VC keep building up, they're going to get bases. That's going to be annoying. I think we're going to have to hopefully hope that the Arbin wants to go in there and grab these two population spaces for coin control and kind of deal with that problem. Tain in is going to be a big, big it's always a hard issue to deal with because they have a tunnel base that's just hard to remove and it's a two population space so every time they rally there they get three gorillas until they so one other thing i didn't mention is you can have it at most two bases in a space right so if they put another base there then every time they rally they can get four gorillas potentially and that just becomes very difficult to deal with I don't want to leave Saigon too open because that's sort of like the end goal sometimes for the insurgents is to move into cities and, and start wrecking havoc there. And the Highlands can become just a, just a quagmire if we don't start taking care of them quickly. Uh, see, look, we also have people up here in Quantry. It's, it's difficult. It's going to be difficult. What do we want to do? I think we're going to sweep. Let's go ahead and get our little piece out. Let's sweep... Goodness, they have four guys here. That is very not great. So we will probably go into play coup. Uh, but if I sweep here, then I could get these guys exposed and then hopefully take them out next turn, which might be more worth it. But the VC can ambush here. See, it's tough, tough choices. I think actually I'm gonna go to Bend In. I think that's what we're gonna do. I am worried about play coup. We're gonna have to figure out something to do there. I don't know what we're gonna do. We may have to rally later and bring some troops over. I don't know. So let's sweep. Let's sweep. Let's look at sweep again. Move any US troops if desired into adjacent insurgent free locks and then into adjacent spaces. Activate one gorilla per US troop or irregular there. If we're in the jungle, it's one for every two. We'll take these two cubes. Notice that we have now put coin control here because we have more pieces than in enemy pieces. Okay, so we're sort of helping out the Arvin, or the, yeah, the Arvin with their victory conditions, but we have to do this in order to get things done, right? So we're going to expose these two, or activate these two gorillas. We're going to expose them, right? Activate them. Because I have three cubes, so they have two guys. Bases don't ever get, like, exposed. We just need to remove the gorillas. Okay, so that was going to be, that is the U.S. play. See, it wasn't, like, super great. <laughs> we really would like to get a little bit more uh, action going on here, but that was the best we could do, I think, with, with our limited op. Okay, so Bob Hope, discard. Draw card. All right, so now we go down here. The ineligible factions now become eligible. And these guys become ineligible for this card. Okay. 
Ah, let's see what this one's got. Okay, unshaded event. Two troop casualties to available. Again, not super helpful for us. And the NVA is ineligible through the next card, and the U.S. stays eligible. So that would have that could have been kind of good, but I just don't think that. I don't know. Maybe maybe I should have taken that event as the U.S. But again, we wouldn't have even gotten first pick on that, um, so it's not super great. The shaded event is any two casualties out of play. The U.S. is ineligible through the next card. Again, that would be nice, but we have no casualties, so the NBA really can't take advantage of that. And as much as we'd love to keep the U.S. on the back foot, I don't think it's worth this early in the game giving up our own tempo to do that because we would become ineligible. Yeah, I mean, maybe later in the game this would have been a very helpful event. Right now it's not as helpful as we want. Uh, and it's not, and these events aren't great for Arvin either. So we can, that gives, that gives Brace are going to do the same thing, right? I think we're going to do an op plus special for the NBA because again, the event is not helpful for Arvin and we want to limit what they do. And this gives us the ability to do a lot of great things. Okay. So if you remember last time we talked a little bit about what the NBA can do. Rally, march, attack, terror. Now we can actually do some of our special things. Okay. What do we have for special activities? Well, we can infiltrate. This lets us take over VC and upgrade NVA forces. This is actually one of the things where you can kind of stick it to the VC player if they've really developed an area, and we'll see how that works. It goes with Rally or Marches. We can pick one or two spaces at an NVA base or anywhere where the NVA is greater than the VC. Okay, so if we have a space with a base, then we can place NVA troops up to the trail value plus bases, and if desired, if, we can replace guerrillas with troops. So this is one way where you build up a bunch of guerrillas and then you can replace them with troops when you want to make a troop push. Okay. Or if we're in a space where the NVA is greater than the VC, um, we can move the opposition one level to neutral and we, we can replace one VC, even a tunnel base piece, within an NVA piece. So this becomes really powerful because let's say, you know, we build up a bunch of things here and we move into Tainin and then we can we could march into Tainin and then we could... Uh, infiltrate right so we could basically replace that tunnel base with an nba base oh that's pretty nice uh we could replace one gorilla with an nba gorilla that's not as helpful usually usually you want to go in and grab bases because again the victory condition for the nba is nba uh, control plus bases so we want to get as many bases out as possible ah <sighs> okay so we have that we have bombard this lets us, uh, basically, any op, we can go with that, it's nice. In one or two spaces, each with at least three U.S. and or Arvin troops and or an Arvin U.S. base adjacent to a space with at least three NBA troops. So we need to get some troops on the board. And we can remove one U.S. or Arvin troops cube from each selected space. So this is nice because essentially you can just start lobbying artillery or bombarding them you know with whatever mortars artillery and it lets us start removing pieces in one or two spaces that we are adjacent with three troops so we got to get troops on the board and then we can start using that and we have the ambush right and we've talked about what ambush does you can uh it lets you use a gorilla to remove a piece if you activate it and if you're on an loc a lock you can target an adjacent space and that's pretty hot Again, we need to start building up the NBA capability. We don't have a ton of money, though. We really need to be kind of careful with our money. Uh, so I think we're going to rally again. We've got some nice stuff going on here in the Parrot's Beak. Let's actually separate those guys. We want to start putting bases down. To put a base down, you can rally and then take two gorillas and turn them into a base. That's how you do that. Okay, so how do we want to do this? We want to rally in a couple spaces. I want to start getting troops on the board, too, because I want to begin bombarding. Uh, especially I want to kind of bombard play coup Darlick because uh, the VC is already going to be a pain there. They're going to have to bring troops in. This could be a really easy way for us to start really hurting the U.S. You know, doing that. Don't have a ton of money. Kind of want to improve the trail as well. So let's do a rally op. It could be good to do a march. March could be a free way. We could move gorillas onto LOCs, which would be like Route 14 because we have a gorilla next to there. Or, yeah, Route 14, either one. That could be nice. And we could ambush. That could be hot. So it's a free op, right? Because if you march into an LSC, it's free. If you march into a space, it's not free. Um, the Parrot's Beak, there's no... Oh, we could go on the Mekong here. So we could go here, but again, I I want to target more U.S. troops than Arvin. Arvin just can... Their keeps come and go, and, and, and we'd really much rather get the U.S. because, again, we want to rack up the casualty count, right? So that we can start getting pieces out of play. 
and I just want to get more things on the board. So I think we're going to do a rally, and I think we're going to try to get some troops on. So we're going to do a rally and infiltrate. I think that's going to be the way to go here. So let's rally in southern Laos. Let's rally in... And we kind of want to improve the trail, and that costs two resources, so I need to be a little sparing. So we're going to do that. We're going to rally there, and we're going to rally in the Parrot's Beak. Just two spaces, right? That costs us two resources and total, because it costs one per rally. And then we're going to infiltrate. Infiltrate is a free action. We have to do it in a rally, and we can only do it in one or two spaces with an NBA base or NBA greater than VC. Both our spaces have a base. So I'll put my little black pawn down like so, just so I can visually remind myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this action. Here I want to take two gorillas off. So return to available, return to available, and we're gonna put a base down. We traded two for one. We'll come down here, yeah, there we go. Boom, that's hot, that's real hot. Up here we're going to do, honestly I don't, I wanna just put gorillas here, okay? So we're gonna, what does Riley Les do? We have an NVA base, so instead we would play NVA gorillas up to the trail value plus NVA bases. So we have a trail value of two, we have one base, so it's three gorillas total. So this is good. We're gonna put one, two, three. Okay. Now we can pay to improve the trail by one box. So we've done two spaces, we're gonna improve the trail by one box. We're gonna go down to, was that one, two, three, four? Oof, getting, getting kind of poor here. Improve the trail to three. All right, we're doing a good job here. Down in the south, I think what we're going to do... Do we want to infiltrate down here? Is that what we wanted to do? I don't think we actually want to infiltrate down here because I don't want to... I want to build up some gorillas here and start maybe doing some other things. So maybe we won't do that. So delete that. I could build troops here, but I, again, you need gorillas to build bases. Troops do not help you build bases. So maybe we'll just do that here. So we have an NBA base, and so if it's a base, we can place troops up to the trail value plus bases, and then we can swap out. Oh, no, no, that's cool. I was thinking we had to swap out gorillas only, so we will we will do that down here too. So we have the trail plus bases. Okay, so the trail value is three, two bases. That means we can bring five cubes down there. So let's do that. That's hot. I like to grab multiples. Let's make that stack big, and then let's kind of draw these guys up. You can move them. They stack kind of nice and vassal, but sometimes you like to see a visual representation of how many guys you have. Now, why am I doing this? One is that I can start moving these guys into Tainan or other places and start taking over VC infrastructure. That can be very helpful for me. But it's also great because troops can do stuff. They're easily killed by the U.S. using airstrikes and other things, but they also can start taking things over, and that's great. We need to do that. Here we're going to, and I'm not going to replace any of these gorillas with troops, so we're just going to put that basic five there. Here I think I'm just going to put three cubes. I don't want to replace any gorillas either because I kind of want to build a base in southern Laos, and so we need gorillas for that. So the trail value is three. We have a base. That's one, so I can put four cubes there. So let's just drag over four cubes. All right, so now we've set ourselves up very nicely because next turn we can begin to bombard play coup if we get another special action we could start moving guys over here and taking things over i think i like all of that cool so we did that next we go to here we get a limb op or event again the event is not great for us so we're going to do a limited op we just did train we can uh, we, we pretty much place all of our forces we could place some gorillas but you know I mean, those are uh, those are good. These are the special forces for the Arvin Rangers. These are actually good pieces to put out. They are really powerful um, because one of the special actions Arvin has is a raid action. It lets us move those guys around, flip them to active, and then we can get rid of two pieces. That's pretty nice, actually. But honestly, I don't know if we need to do that because we already we only I mean yeah we only have two pieces left. We've pretty much gotten everything out we need. So we could patrol, we could sweep, we could assault. I think we want to sweep. We want to start taking over this, getting more coin control. That's what we want, coin control. And I am a little worried that the VC is going to just be doing lots and lots of good stuff here. It's a limited op, so we can only pick one space. 
Uh, I think we'll sweep into Kin Fung. Let's do that. All right, I'm not going to place a pawn there. It's just one space. So for sweeping, we can pay three resources. We can move any Arvin troops, if desired, onto adjacent insurgent free locks and then to adjacent spaces. Then we activate one enemy gorilla per Arvin cube or ranger there. And then in jungle, we do one for two. Okay. Let's go ahead and take... These are our troop... No, that's our police. Oh, that's right. Kanto doesn't have a bunch of troops. Ah, oh, but Saigon does. Awesome. Okay. So we'll go ahead and move in. One, two, three, four. We'll leave a troop here. All right. So we'll bring in our four troops here. And we're going to go ahead and sweep. So that means we're going to mark this guy active. You can see here now we have coin control. That's hot. Uh, we also need to pay three resources for that. So let's go to the top here and be like one, two, three. All right. So again, limited op can only do one space. We probably need to be thinking about what's going on up in the north, but I, I, I do want to start securing the south somehow. And I think that's going to be what we do there. Next time, I think we're going to need to start patrolling and getting these police out. Because I think patrol lets us move any Arvin cubes. Yeah, so we can move police out. And those, those are nice ways to do that. Okay, in the faction play, we are done with that. So discard it, draw a card. These factions become eligible. These factions become ineligible. All right, so let's see who comes up first on the Phoenix program. Um, Phoenix program, that's like from MacGyver. Do you remember MacGyver? Hmm, yeah, right? He worked, no, he worked for the Phoenix Project. Phoenix program? No, I think it was Phoenix program. All right. So the U.S. gets to go first on this. That's hot. Uh, let's just do some nice things. What are the events here? Cadre is assassinated. Remove any three VC pieces total from any coin control spaces. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, we could do that. Could be very nice for us, but we'll see if we want to do that. The shaded event is add a terror marker to any two spaces outside of Saigon with coin control and the VC. That is not hot. And then set them to active opposition. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad. We don't want to let the VC could putting down terror markers makes it more expensive for us to pacify or build support. We have to pay additional resources to remove them. Um, it flips both ways. If they want to do more opposition, you have to pay to remove those two for the other side. You know, terror is just pretty bad for everybody. Um, but any two space outside Saigon with a coin control on the VC and set it to active opposition. So like they could put that in bend in and move this to active opposition that'd be pretty bad for us they could do that to uh where else do they have coin control like they could do it in a couple spaces yeah they could do it here in ken fong move it back to active i'm not super worried about it but again i don't want to give the vc they just got a bunch of resources but i hate handing them free active opposition putting down terror markers that sounds just not great although i do love this event if we take the event they can't take the event but they get an op plus special from any three v pieces total from any coin control so we could just get rid of all this here Oh, this would have been nice if we actually had coin control here. If I'd have moved two troops in, I don't think... We wouldn't have had coin control, so that actually wouldn't have saved us there. Uh, we don't have coin control here either, so that's not great. So basically, it would just help us out in Binden. I don't think we have coin control anywhere else. Oh, yeah, we do in lots of places, but it's not enough to really be awesome. So this could help us here, but honestly, since it's just one space and not a bunch of really tasty choice spaces, I think we're just going to do one op now i don't want to give them the event this is a really powerful event i think so we're going to do just an op only no special activity and we're going to limit them to getting a limited op pardon me <coughs> need some water down here okay since we did the the sweeping here and we have the ability to take them out Oh, we only have three guys there. How does our assault work? Let me take a look at that one more time. Oh, that's up here, isn't it? All right, so let's take a look. Oh, he's down here. Okay. Space with U.S. troops and insurgents. Three Arvin resources. If we had Arvin, we won't. For each space, remove one active enemy piece. Uh, for each U.S. troops cube, but we are in the Highland, so it's one for every two. And it's only troops cubes, so that kind of that's not great. But we also have access to... Oh, we're not going to do special op. So we don't want to give them that. So I don't have the ability to use my airstrike, airlift, or advise. 
because I just don't want that event. That's that's rough. That's rough because we just don't have enough pieces to take things out here. Hmm. Hmm. Do I want to sweep again and start exposing more guys? I don't want to kill things. Kind of want to do that. Uh, maybe I am going to have to give them a crack at this event. They only have a couple spaces they could do that in, so maybe what we'll do, I change my mind. We're going to do op and special. And i tell you what we're going to do, because we need to start degrading the trail. And the way we do that is through the special airstrike op, okay? Airlift lets us move a bunch of troops around. That can be really helpful. We don't have a ton of troops right now. We could move Arbin as well, and that's pretty hot. But we're not going to do that right now. Advise lets us uh, sweep in place or assault with Arbin, so we basically help the Arbin do stuff. We tell them how to do it. And airstrike lets us just blow pieces away. So I think we're going to airstrike. Let's take a look at that. Destroy exposed enemies, degrade the trail. Any op can go with it. Uh, one to six spaces with coin pieces, two in monsoon. So monsoon is, is a special thing that happens when the coup card shows up. The card, we'll talk about it when we get to it, but just know that monsoon it gets restricted. So we roll a die for hits uh, as desired. Oh, roll a die for hits. I think that changed. It used to just be like six. Oh, I think I need to look at my game. My game might be a little old. Okay. As desired, degrade the trail one box max for two hits and or remove one active enemy base for one hit. Let me look at this again. Degrade the trail one box. We can only degrade it by one level total for two hits. So we can trade two hits for one box remove. And we can remove one active enemy piece for one hit. Troops, gorillas, and bases, no tunnels. And shift each space towards active opposition. Ah, see, my game is older. And it used to just be a straight up six pieces. <laughs> and you could degrade the trail. I think that's because that was really overpowered. Um, that doesn't matter. Still going to do it. Still going to do it. So we're going to basically assault and airstrike. Now I can I can only assault here. So it's not as effective as maybe I want it to be, but I want to get rid of these pieces while I can. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to do that. So we're going to assault here. We're going to airstrike here. Where else could we airstrike? Can we pick multiple spaces? One to six spaces with coin pieces. Okay, so I can pick more spaces. Well, we have coin pieces here. The one thing about airstriking, though, is that it does shift one level to active opposition. Because, of course, we're using indiscriminate air power. It's not great for the populace. You know, they don't love it. So we want to be very judicious in our use of air power. And honestly, I'm pretty okay with just limiting it here. I think, you know, if we had more active exposed pieces, it probably could be better to airstrike more. But let's just try to do it here. Let's just do it here and try to get rid of the VC here. Because if we can clear them out... And then we can start moving these. We only have a precious few troop cubes, and we can start moving them around and maybe taking out play coup, and that could be really helpful for us. And we want to be sure to remove this base before the VC gets a chance to use it and hide the gorillas again that we've exposed. Okay, so we can do the faction order any way we want, or like our op order, I should say. So what we'll do is we'll actually um, do the airstrike first. So we're going to roll a die. Again, i got to look, because this is different than how I'm used to doing it. Yeah. So we're going to roll a die for hits. Okay, so let's see. We got a, what is this? A tan, red, blue. We're blue. All right, we rolled a five. That's hot. That's uh, that's really hot. Okay, that's actually exactly what we wanted. We, you know, a little less would have been okay, but five is perfect. We're going to spend three of those hits here, and we're going to get rid of these gorillas. So I'm going to... Uh, Put them back underground because otherwise they just go back like that. And we're going to return them to available so they get blown away. Return to available. Oh, that's hot. We're going to shift this one level to opposition because we did we did bomb bend in so people were not happy. Uh, so that was three of our bomb our air points, and then we're going to use the other two to degrade the trail by one. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Cool. Uh, sweet. So nice. Now we give the VC. They have limited op or event. So what was the event again? I know we just talked about it a million times. Add a terror marker to any two spaces outside Saigon with coin control and the VC and set it to active opposition. So they need coin control and the VC. Coin control. So this is not coin control. This is not coin control. This is not coin control. Not coin, not coin, not coin. This is coin control. 
So basically we could do that. We could get a free ability to do that, but I don't think that's worth it, honestly. But we only have a limited op. So is that worth it? It's a free way to set to active opposition and put a terror marker in it, which is pretty great, honestly. I don't think we're gonna do that. I don't think we're gonna do that. I think I'd rather use my limited op to maybe march and ambush. Maybe I wanna start building up in the jungle. That's probably a good idea too. <clears throat> we could build up and tain in and make it a real strong, secure place. Maybe that's a great idea. Because actually, we're Tainan is great because it's close to Onlock, it's close to Saigon, it's close to Gen Vong. It's a really nice location. I am a little worried that the NVA is going to come in and take my good stuff. Um, so maybe I want to put it over here. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe that's a better idea. Because they haven't really come in force here yet. When they start coming in force, that will be harder, but I'm not too worried about it here. So we'll rally here. We can only do one, right? Because it's limited up. Limited up. That's going to cost us one resource. Boom. And we get to rally population plus bases, I believe. Let's double check once more. So we're going to rally. We're going to place one BC gorilla or place two of the base. Yeah, if it's a base, we place gorillas up to population plus bases. All right, so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. It's going to get two gorillas coming in. I like that. This is good because one, I want to start putting more, I want to change this two of these guys into a base later and start really making this a, a, a hotbed of descent. All right, in faction play, because they did their stuff. We're going to move these guys over. Cool. Phoenix program is over. Discard, draw a card. Okay. So this is very interesting. This is good for the NBA. We talked about momentum and we talked about capabilities. Uh, capabilities last the entire game. It is very, very good to get a capability and roll with it. Uh, what does this one do? It lets us, the NBA attack in one space removes one enemy per troop. That's really good because if you look at the NBA, when we attack, remove one enemy per two troops. So in one space, we get one to one. That's really good for us. And it's really hard to pass up on capabilities. I'll be really honest, it's very difficult. We could do an op and special and some start bombarding the US. That could be really helpful too. But uh, this lets us just get really powerful really quickly. And who else? And the Arvin is the other piece. Yeah, I'm not so worried about Arvin. They are, you know, we'll worry about them in a minute. I'm not super worried about handing them an op and special. I think that's okay. I think we're going to take this ability. Yeah, we're taking it. We're taking it. All right. Doing the event. Let's see if I have the pieces I want. Event markers. Where, oh, yeah. See, it's going to do a little drag. Vassal is a little interesting like this. So what was this event called? This was called PT76. What does that do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's ours. Because, of course, you see this could have gone both ways, right? For each NBA attack space, first remove one NBA troop cube. Um, this is one of those things where, like, if the other side had gotten it, they could have given us a negative capability, but we're going to take it and get the positive capability. And so we're just we're just getting good, man. We're getting good. Let's go ahead and throw that down. Oh, yeah, capabilities. Boom. We'll throw that there. Okay, so now every time the NBA attacks, they get in one space, they can do one enemy per troop. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Thank you for that. Arvin, op plus special. So what kind of special activities does the Arvin have access to? Well, they can govern in a space. Let's let them get aid or patronage. Remember, we want to build patronage to get our victory condition. It's in one or two coin-controlled spaces with support. That's not Saigon, because Saigon's worth so much. It would, it would be game-breaking if you could do that. And not selected for training, because this only goes with the ops of training or patrol. In each space, we can add three times the population to our aid. Aid is how we get resources during coup rounds. Or if there's more Arvin cubes than US cubes in that space, we can transfer one times the population from aid to patronage and shift that place towards neutral. Because again, we're basically building up our crony network. Our, I mean, you can look at it both ways, right? Either they're building up cronies or they're just building up their own loyal 
people, right? But either way, from the perspective of this game, that is not great in terms of support of the people. They would rather have a better government than one that is just building up its own patronage network. We can use transport to move troops, troops quickly and prepare rangers. Let's just move up to six troops or rangers from one space and then move it to adjacent locks and cities. And then we can shift... Um, and then in any adjacent destinations, blah, stop an insurgents, and we can flip all rangers underground. Why, why would rangers be active? Because they've been raiding, and this lets us reposition and strike with special forces. We can do it with patrol sweep or assault, any one or two spaces. In each space, we can move in an adjacent ranger, and then if desired, activate that ranger, and then remove two pieces, uh, two enemy pieces, bases last, no tunnels. They can't get rid of tunnel things, but they can get rid of stuff. Unfortunately, we don't have any, oh, we do have a ranger, don't we? Yeah, 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 we have a ranger up here. Okay, so we could raid. We could definitely raid with that. And they could go into an adjacent space. They could go to Kuang Tri or, or Kuang Tri, Kuang Nyai, or they go to Kuang Tri uh, Thuy Ten. Again, apologies to any of my Vietnamese fans. If I have any, I, I don't mean to butcher your names there. I should probably look it up and get the phonetics. Anyway, uh, we can move that guy there and do that. We could also go into Da Nang, but we don't need to go there. That's our only special guy right there, right? I don't think we have another one anywhere else. We don't. So raid is a very pot. I mean, it's very powerful. I think raid is very powerful, honestly, and we should be using it a little more. But you know what we need to do? Let's go ahead and let's take advantage of the fact we have active guys here. So let's do an assault op because it lets us get rid of active guys. We can combine that with anything we want to do. So we could go. No, we can't govern with it. We could do a transport or we could do a raid. So that's what we'll do, I think. I think we're going to assault here. And then up here, we're going to use the raid. And let's go ahead and use our raid to help out our buddies. Because I don't really want the U.S. just getting, like, obliterated really quickly. Uh, and again, mountains are harder to root things out in. This is a lowlands area, so it's pretty easy to do anything in. So we'll go ahead and do this. We'll raid up here. Okay. Let's do the raid first because we can choose the order we want to do things in. I'm going to choose raid first. What does raid do? We looked it up. We basically get to, in any space, move in adjacent rangers. Then, if desired, activate an underground ranger and remove two pieces. Uh, bases last, no tunnels. We can't get rid of tunnels. They're not that good at doing that. Okay. Let's move him in here. Flip him to active. Boom. Get rid of those guys. That's hot. See, if we could have done this a little, if, if somehow the Arvin could have done this first, then we could have used our airstrike ability to take out that base, because now it's the only thing left in the region. Uh, if the US gets to go first, they do have one cube. They could just get rid of it with an assault. This, these are all good things. We're trying to help out our, our US allies you know, in any way we can. Raid activities are free. To assault, we're going to pay three resources down here. In each space, remove one active enemy piece. Troops, then guerrillas, then bases last, tunnels on a four to six. Per two Arvin troops in jungle or lowland, this is the lowland area. Three Arvin troops in the highlands. See, they take more, they're not as efficient, they're not as good. So it takes more to do, to get rid of things. Or any two Arvin cubes in a city or lock, plus six aid per base removed. So we're now removing a base, we're in the lowlands, so we have four guys, we can get rid of two pieces. We're gonna pay three resources, we're gonna flip these guys back to active and return them to available return to available hot so we've done that and we're going to take away three resources one two three okay in faction plagues we only got a oh we did do a special yeah 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 we can only assault in one space though because we didn't have any other troops anywhere else okay not bad not bad at all shift those guys back over to there do a quick time check you know, I think that's pretty long enough for this video. Let's take a look at the next card. Discard that, and we're gonna draw a new card. War Photographer is coming up. So we'll leave it here, and uh, when we come back, we're gonna do some more Fire in the Lake.